this is something I'm doing on request because my previous video was on how to do a cube with CSS custom properties and I got asked how to rotate it with the mouse. So this is what I'm going to do today. It's the exact same HTML structure and the exact same base CSS that positions the cube faces in 3D. So today is the interaction, the JS. So we start with a few constants and we have first a selector which is the cube and then we have the actual cube element which is going to be and we're also going to have a flag and this is the drag flag which is initially false and the coordinates of um, the first motion when we um, press down on the mouse so these are going to be null so in general these are the coordinates um, for every tiny motion we have every tiny motion detected by mouse move and speaking of which let's add event listeners mouse down so this is going to uh, lock the cube for the rotation false and then we're going to have touch start then we're going to take these two and create two more sets and this is going to be um, mouse move and touch move And this is going to uh, do a rotation and at the end we're going to release and this is going to be on mouse up or touch end and since we're also using touch we're going to have a helper function that we can make this a bit more uniform for both touch and um, mouse and now we're going to have the three functions lock rotate and release So the first thing we do here, uh, when we lock, we set the drag to true. And we only do something in the other two functions if this drag is set to true. So if drag, and we put everything inside. Otherwise, we just exit these functions. And here, when we release, we just set drag to false again. And we set x0 and y0 to null again. So this is what we do when we release. And here we have and we get x0 and y0 for the first motion. Um, point x. So this is going to be the start point of the first tiny motion. We're done with the lock, we're done with this helper function, and here again and now we need to get the end point of this tiny motion detected by mouse move or touch move, and it's exactly the same. Now we need to get the differences between the end point and the start point of this tiny motion. So it's x minus x0 and 
the difference along the y-axis dy is y minus y0. And now we need to get the total motion, which is um, the diagonal total motion, which is the hypotenuse. And if this is, this is zero, we have no motion, and we do nothing from here on. But if this is different from zero, then uh, we move on. And the last thing we, uh, we're going to do here is set x0 to x. So um, the end point of this motion is going to be the start point of the next tiny motion. And before that, we need uh, to compute the components of uh, the rotation axis. And this rotation axis is going to be perpendicular onto the, the line of motion between the uh, start point and end point of our tiny motion detected by mouse move or touch move. So we need to get the components. So because it's um, perpendicular, then its um, x component depends on dy and its y component depends on dx. So dx component, um, I like to normalize this stuff. I don't really need to, but I like to do it. And the y component, j, and this is going to be x. And now the rotation angle, we're not going to have a z component. And here we're going to um, add a constant, a rotation constant. And how much the cube rotates when we move the mouse or you know, move our finger on the screen depends on this constant, which we can change later on. It doesn't really matter. K times D. And now we create the transform chain. And it's going to be a rotate 3D. And inside it, we interpolate uh, the arguments. So we have i, j, 0, we don't have a component along the z-axis, a, and um, this is in degrees. And then we add the previous transform that we have, which is uh, get computed star or cube transform. And we make sure this isn't none. because that would make the whole thing not work. So one more thing we need to add here is um, a style element. Create element style. And we add this element to the body. Now we set this transform chain so first we have the selector interpolated here uh, and then we need the rules uh, transform so it's just one rule transform and we set it to the chain from before and this is it this should work and now I'm actually moving this cube, I'm rotating it with, uh, oh, no, not like this. So I'm rotating it with my finger right now. So yeah, this is it. Uh, if you have any other ideas, you can drop them in the comments or on Twitter. And yeah, this is it.